Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of The Trevor Olson Show, episode 52. Pick up episode 52 uh, on Wednesday, April <clears throat> something or other, 2021. My name is Trevor Olson. I'll be your host. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, good, good to be here. I have finally continued to enter into the modern world uh, a- as an individual. I have purchased Netflix. Since we finally have some streaming services available out here, which can allow us to stream Netflix, I have decided to buy it. You just said that, Trevor! No, I have Netflix now. So I've been catching up with... Uh, here's the thing about Netflix for me, or just watching television in general. I, I think it's a big fucking waste of time, most of the time. Uh, I think that it's just, it's so easy and it's so comfortable that it's just really easy to develop a habit of like, ah, fuck it. I'll just watch Netflix, you know, like instead of doing something else. And so I, I, I intention, I, 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 I intentionally, I intentionally, uh, have never purchased Netflix because I was like, I'm going to get sucked into it and not, you know, and get less shit done. But Here's why here's why and why I got it and here's my justification for getting it. A lot of different podcasts that I listen to, a lot of a lot of different shit that I <clears throat> that I watch and listen to. They're always talking about Netflix documentaries or documentaries in general. And so I purchased it with the intent of learning something from the documentaries. Uh, I'm already fucking hooked in to The Sinner, which is not a documentary. It's just an entertainment. It's just an entertaining show. Um, I did watch, however, uh, a couple couple uh, documentaries, which which I, I I'll share with you guys today and can discuss. Spoiler alert! Um, it's co- <laughs> the one first one I watched was uh, I think it's called the Ted Bundy tapes, and obviously it's about Ted Bundy, but. If you don't know who Ted Bundy uh, is, where the fuck have you been? Uh, Ted Bundy was an American serial killer uh, who... When was his, his killing spree? I think it was in the 70s. Ted Bundy killing spree timeline. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly. From the span of July 1974 to... Um, let's see. Well, he has a trial in 78, so I think it was five years. I think it was five years he was getting away with with all that shit. But Ted Bundy is fascinating to me and to many people, clearly, because of, I mean, he's he's widely known. Um, he was a good-looking, charismatic, intelligent psychopath. And people in the 70s really, and, and people nowadays as well, we still think of serial killers and horrible people as, you know, these monsters lurking in the dark in some corner somewhere with, as Ted Bundy said, you know, with salivating lips and, <coughs> saliva, you know, salivating horrible, scary people. And it's like, you look at Ted Bundy and he's, as I just stated, he's a good looking, intelligent, charismatic man. And you look, you can look at a lot of people. I have, I've realized this about myself. I, I'm, I'm, too, hopefully not, I'm, I, I'm too trusting, I'm fucking too trusting, and I, I try to see the best in everybody, which I think is a good thing, but, I, just, what am I saying, I don't know, it's just, uh, I, 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 like, I wouldn't be able to pick Bundy out, out of you know, if, you know, if there's ten people, if I was just looking, I'd be like, I don't know which, I don't know which one's killing people. They all look nice to me, so it it just it's it's a good rem- it, rem- it just reminded me of the fact that yeah, the you know, serial killers and killers, uh, they're just people like you and like me, and you know they they've gone <clears throat> off the deep end, so to speak. Sorry, I keep coughing. <clears throat> I'm not sick. Um, just had a little something in my throat. So, yeah, man, it's just, it's, it's a scary reminder of, Ted Bundy was just an ordinary person. He was obviously a psychopath. So there, that does differentiate him from the average psychologically healthy person. 
Because from my understanding of it, anecdotally, uh, psychopaths, their brain chemistry is different than uh, normal people. And so that that was, I, I always wondered, I was like, how could somebody do such a thing to somebody? And then once I learned that, it made so much more sense. It's like, oh, okay, so yes, he's, okay, they they don't feel empathy and they are narcissistic and they are psychopathic. And so th- they are interfacing with the world in a different manner than you and than me. Unless I'm a psychopath. Than you and than me. I looked up this morning if I, I, I if I was a narcissist. <laughs> I was like, how do you know if you're a narcissist? I took a test and it said that I was a narcissist. But here's the thing. It was just some fucking test on the internet. What does that fucking show? Uh, that sounds like something a narcissist would say, Trevor. No, I think I, I, I've realized this over the last few years. I think at, from time, at times I have, there are some narcissistic qualities that I may have or uh, self-grandiose ideas that I might have as well about myself. But hopefully recognizing those, I can try to mitigate them. I, I, I don't think I'm a narcissist. I watched a bunch of videos on them this morning. Um, and there's obviously a difference between self-confidence and narcissism. But some of the qualities were seeking validation and stuff like that. And and uh, I ha- that is something I've had to work on is seeking validation from people and and just being secure in myself and being self-confident. But uh, and you sh- as you and I should both be, we you know, everybody should strive to be self-confident uh, and not and not bleed over into narcissism. There's all sorts of different forms of narcissism. There's all sorts of shit that uh, that can go wrong along the way. So. Uh, I don't, as far as I'm aware, you know, from the test on the internet, uh, I don't think I'm a narcissist. I just think that maybe I have some, uh, some, you know, little areas in my life that I need to work on. That's all. Like anybody else, don't look at me like that. Anyway, back to Ted Bundy. Uh, fascinating documentary. Very well done. I'm having the director on here in a few days. Not really. That'd be cool, though. Um, yeah, it was, it was very well done. Uh, and what a, what an, you know, after, spoiler alert, after he was uh, convicted on death row, uh, rather he got, once he was on death row, I mean, he was, he, 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 he asked a woman to marry him during his, one of his trials. And she said, yes, how cra- you know, she's out there. And then not only did they get married, but they had a child together while he was on death row because he was on death row for 10 years. And I learned something really, really interesting about death row uh, the other day. So a lot of people go, myself included, you know, you look at Ted Bundy and he's, con- you know, a convicted killer, killed something like 36 women. And you go, okay, you know, y- your stance might be different, but, or as far as like, okay, yes, he deserves to die, which is, you know, he killed 36 women. And so, um, but then you go, well, why the hell does it take 10 years? It's like, fucking put him in the, you know, kill him, kill him. That's what everyone kind of argues. They're like, you know, why is it taking so long? And it's something like it takes, it costs the state $20 million to kill a person. And people go, well, what the, like, why, why? And it's like, what I realized and what I learned was that that's actually really good because it costs the state $20 million to put someone to death legally sounds fucked up to say it but um you don't want to give the state the absolute power to just yep you're on death okay yep convicted death row boom you're dead because that's the way i used to look at it like why don't they just kill him but you don't want the state to have that power and on there's horrific stories of innocent people being convicted um being wrongfully convicted and placed on death row and I can't remember this gentleman's name. Let me see. Uh, let me look her up here. Innocent man, electric, fire head. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. I think it was right here. Uh, electric chair. I is this it? I don't know. Uh, I just, re- I, there's a horrible story of this gentleman. You can look him up on your own time. 
uh, who was later found out to be innocent, and he was convicted to death, uh, to death row, and he uh, was given the electric chair, and fucking, like, it took eight minutes to kill him, because they had things go wrong, and flames erupted, like, his head caught on fire, that's not supposed to happen, and you hear about that, and, and it's just, her, like, it's so horrific and terrible and especially because you find out later that he was innocent so you the fact that it takes years and years and years to kill someone legally on death row is actually a good thing and because you don't want the state to have that type of power you know it should cost whatever 20 million dollars and take 15 years to kill somebody um that made a lot of sense to me uh, I, because I had always thought, like, why the hell, why, why is, oh, yep, they're on death row, and then, you know, they die, um, you know, of natural causes in prison, because they never, you know, get, you know, lethal injection, um, I don't know what they do now, what do they do, lethal injection, no, is, is the electric chair still active, is the electric chair banned, here we go, as of 2021, the only places in the world that still sir reserve the electric cha- electric chair as an option for execution are the U.S. states of it's all the South, <laughs> jeez, Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Wow, Arkansas and Oklahoma laws provide for its use pr- provides for its use should lethal injection ever be held to be unconstitutional. Okay. That's pretty fucking crazy that they still fuck, uh, strap people down, fuck people. <laughs> they fuck them in the chair and then they let them, yeah, it, um, that's pretty crazy. I mean, this is a dark episode apparently, uh, but it's like, yeah, how do you, you know, ethically kill someone? It's like euthanasia, um, which that can go wrong very quickly. That's what they did in, in Nazi Germany, if I'm understanding correctly. They used euthanasia and they said that they were doing it out of compassion. Now, that is the main narrative of euthanasia. And, you know, we've all had people, grandparents, great grandparents, we've seen them fade away into oblivion and into misery and then into death. And you, and then, by the end, you're like, thank God they're gone because they were miserable. They were no longer there. They were suffering. They were in pain. There are moments where it seems like it would be compassionate and fuck, man. I don't know. Maybe it would be, but it, it, it's like you have to be you have to be so careful with that sort of thing. This it, it, and it needs to completely stay out of government. They're the fucking government's hands because that. That shit can go wrong very quickly from my from my very limited understanding. Um, so, uh, what's Trevor's podcast about? Well, today was lethal injection. Uh, Ted Bundy murders. Uh, people's heads on fire with the electric chair. Uh, it was great. It was good. <laughs> um, but yeah, he had a he had a kid, Ted Bundy on death row which was crazy he tried to live like a little family life and he wanted to play house as they say and yeah i was i don't know it was just a good it was a good documentary uh it's very it was a limited i think there was only four or five episodes i think it was there's four episodes they're all about an hour long and so like i said very well done i would recommend it i don't know i'll be if i'm completely honest i'm uh i was i'm pretty fascinated by ted bundy not in a I'd like to imitate him kind of way. You didn't have to point that out, Trevor. Uh, oh, maybe he tried to point it out because he really does want to imitate him. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. I guess, like I said, it's just that the fact that he is comes off as a normal, intelligent dude. But then when you do listen to him talk, you can get a sense of how narcissistic he is and how manipulative, manipulative, manipulative how easily he tries to manipulate people like the like he showed up late to his trial one day and the judge was like hey 
Mr. Bundy, we will not be following your schedule. And he just goes off on the judge in a professional way. He's like, judge, oh, it's got a text. What does it say? Oh, be sure to get, uh, get some, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm just reading the text message. Sorry. Um, and he's like, judge, I have been mistreated in my cell. There's poor lighting there. I can't read. For this trial, which I'm trying to def defend myself in, you and the world are out to get me. So he makes it all about him. And he says how much he's being mis mistreated. It's like he killed 40 women almost. And yeah, that's what psychopaths do. They manipulate and they, they're very, you, yeah, especially in, like he's a, a, an intelligent person. And also what I found interesting, which I didn't know, from my understanding of it prior he i mean he was raised in a christian household and from what i heard he had a normal upbringing but in that documentary they just briefly hint at that the fact that he may have been physically or psychologically abused by i think was his by his grandfather and he never admits it I, as my as far as i understand he he you know he denies it you know it's a sense of denial if it did happen uh he says nope like i had a great life had a great upbringing christian family the whole thing and he never brings it he never brings it up but i don't know you just get a sense that he has this wall up and you know he is telling his own narrative and i don't know the dude was a psychopath and uh what a crazy time that would have been to be a, you know to be living in those areas and you know, to be a young woman, I mean, the the fear that was going on, because uh, he killed, uh, he was living in, all his murders took place in, uh, let's see if I can get this right, Washington, uh, Idaho, I don't think he did, Idaho, uh, Washington, Utah, Colorado, Florida, I think, and California, there you go, Washington, California, Utah, Colorado, Florida, yes, there was five states. Five states in a period of five years. So I th think 36 women. And I mean, just the, the widespread fear of it. You know, yeah, I was, I, I was, I talked to my mom about it, you know, just as far as does she remember, you know, hearing about it and all that, all that jazz. And she was like 19 at the time. And, you know, thank God, like, ugh, it just, you just, you don't, you do, you think you like something like that could never happen to, anybody you know or or to you in particular and uh yeah crazy shit can happen so anyway i watched that show it was good not to stay fucking dark the whole time um and i also watched i i didn't know if i had watched it but now in hindsight i know i, I watched it for the second time uh, i watched ronnie coleman the king now for those of you who don't know who ronnie coleman was uh ronnie coleman is considered one of, if not the greatest bodybuilder of all time. And, I mean, he's his story is great. He's he's a just a he comes off as a genuine sweet man, and he was just. If you haven't seen pictures or videos of Ronnie Coleman, look look at look him up. Be, like look up Ronnie Coleman working out. I mean. He was so fucking big. Like, let me see if I can pull a picture. I just got to see a picture of him again while I'm, while I'm looking up Ronnie Coleman. Jacked. <laughs> there we go. Images. Yeah, so, I mean, he was just, it's absurd. It's, it truly, like, nobody had seen size like him before and his story is great as far as oh my god he was so fucking huge oh my god he it was just absurd and he was a police officer by the way full time while he was mr olympia i think he might have quit halfway through but he was a police he was an active police officer while he was bodybuilding lay off you just just look look him up he it's it's absolutely absurd how big he was, uh, and he and he did too, man. He unfortunately, 
destroyed his body in the process of of building it up. I mean, he was moving, without exaggeration, thousands of pounds. He would leg press 2,300 pounds. He would squat 800. I mean, he would he would do so much weight. It was just it was absurd. It truly was. So I, yeah, I re- yeah, look him up. Look him up. And yeah, man, he was just a he was a he's a cool dude. But it was a great documentary, just kind of talking about uh, you know his how he got started. The dude started bodybuilding because. The, the, one of his friends at the gym who he one of his friends owned a gym and he was like hey i'll give you a fr- you know you're pretty jacked you know maybe you should try because he was already a big dude he's like maybe you should try bodybuilding and he's like i don't know and he's like i'll give you a free gym gym membership and he's like okay and so he he just started bodybuilding uh to get a free membership that was he never pictured himself as the greatest bodybuilder of all time that was never a plan I'm fascinated by by that, when that happens, when somebody becomes great at something, and not only great, but maybe the greatest, and they go, yep, wasn't planning on it, wasn't uh, wasn't a thought, just kind of stumbled upon, upon it, found out I was good at it, and just did it, because I enjoyed it, and they become great at it. I'm fascinated by that, because I always, I always thought that, you know, I don't know, like, maybe, like, you, you like, you gotta, like, you, it's, it, you think that somebody's great at something that, you know, Ronnie Coleman as a, as a four-year-old would be like, I'm gonna be the greatest bodybuilder of all time, but no, it was, it wasn't until he was in his 20s where he started, like, considering bodybuilding, and I'm just fascinated by that, I'm fascinated when people become great at something, and it was not part of the plan. And but but they they realized they were good at it and they went with it. So I guess some people, yeah, I guess you got to find your thing, find your thing, and and get good at it. Get good at it. And if you haven't looked up pictures of Ronnie Coleman, look him up. Yeah, he was just so huge. <laughs> um, but yeah, in uh now, I mean, he as I said, he he paid the price. Uh, he is, he said, double hip replacements. He, um, the dude can barely move, unfortunately. He can barely move. He can barely walk. Um, he has a great attitude about it all, which is good. Um, he's, you know, he's a father. He's focused on that. He's focused on, uh, being a good husband, a good father, and continuing to, he has a, obviously, a successful supplement line, um, multi million dollar supplement line. So he's, good there but yeah he i mean and he's just he's in the documentary you do you feel bad for him um because he's in constant pain but he's basically just used to it but he still trains every day by the way uh (laughs) and my mom said something which i i was i found annoying which (laughs) but i we talked about it um she you know she said that he should have he shouldn't have worked out so hard because of the way he is now. And I totally understand that perspective. I'm as far as like it may yeah, you would go any other person you go of course you don't want to injure yourself. You don't want to hurt yourself to where you are essentially disabled because you're working out so hard. But also, he's the greatest bodybuilder of all time, one of the greats, if not the greatest. You know, it's him and Arnold and, you know, those classics. For me, at least, it's it's between him and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I think Arnold just did so much for the sport. Ronnie was obviously bigger, but, um, you know, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger is the, the archetypal bodybuilder. So, anyhow, but I was just like, you can't, because she said something to me. Yeah, she, she, you know, I don't know. It was just something along the lines of, he shouldn't have done that to himself, whereas I said, but look, and she didn't know him and how the impact that he's had. I was like, no, he's the greatest bodybuilder of all time. You don't get to that position. You don't 
that's not handed to you. You fucking destroy your body in the process to to get to his level. And he even says right in the documentary, he's like, I wouldn't change anything. So he's happy with his choices. But there's some that's a uh, it's, that's a sacrifice, I suppose. You know, he's he dest- destroyed it. You know, maybe he didn't realize he would destroy his body in the process the way that he did. But I don't know. She, this is the way she kind of flippantly dismissed what, you know, what he had done. But again, she didn't really know who he was. Um, well, I just thought I was like, no, no, he's the fucking greatest bodybuilder of all time. And yes, he destroyed his body in the process as an, and as, as a now middle-aged man, but he will forever, he's a, he's a, it's, he's a, he's a legend. He's a living legend. He's a living legend. And so I don't know. You've got, you've got that. Can I use this word? That dichotomy? I don't know. I don't know how to use that word. Um, of, you know, do you do you work less and not injure yourself and uh, not be the greatest bodybuilder of all time but have more longevity and more dexterity and be able to move around better? Or do you destroy your body and become the greatest bodybuilder of all time? He chose the latter. So, uh, yeah, if you've never seen that documentary either, I would, I would it was good. Uh, Ronnie Coleman, The King. Yeah, especially if you've never seen him, it'll blow your fucking mind just how big he was. I remember the first time I ever saw videos of him, it was, uh, I was in high school and some, yeah, I saw a video on a phone and I looked him up and I was like, I stumbled upon him because I didn't even think, like, yeah, he didn't even look, when you first see him, you go, that's not real. Like, that can't be real. And then you find out it is, and you see the videos of him working out, and it's just absurd. It's absurd how big he was. By the end, I mean, he, by the end of his career, by the way, he won eight Mr. Olympias in a row, which is tied for the record. And um, by the end of his, by his eighth one, he was 300 pounds, uh, <laughs> which is so big. 300 pounds of just jacked jacked muscle but people started to say that he was getting too big and that he wasn't in his prime anymore even though he was continuing to get bigger so it was um he's, he is he's just a legend sorry i feel like i'm all over the place just bouncing all around like usual um i was telling uh shane the other day how i like doing this podcast by myself um but yeah, it's since I have nobody to bounce ideas off of, I don't even know what, if what the fuck I'm saying is uh, is any any good. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh yeah, I think this way, and then there's no there's no counter, there's no there's no die dialogue or anything. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, whatever. But uh, yes, I as as stated, I have Netflix now. Whoop de doo! Took took uh took to 2021 to get to Netflix, and uh, I'm actually excited to c- continue listening and watching some more documentaries. Um, what which one do I want to watch? Well, I want to watch this movie called Silk Road. I want to watch that, and um, it sounds so good. Uh, Silk Road was like a like a dark web website. Um where people could buy drugs and, and guns and all sorts of crazy shit. And it was started by this dude in his 20s, my age. I think he was 26 when he started it, something like that. And he, from my understanding of it, he started this website because he felt that people had a right, as adults, to whatever the fuck they wanted. You know, like... If they want to buy coke, they can buy coke. If they want to buy guns, they can buy guns. It was, you know, and people like, of course that's controversial. And uh, he got put away forever unless he gets pardoned or something else happens. Uh, he got put away forever for, for what he did as far as making the site. But it's it seems like a very interesting story uh, directed by Tiller Russell. And Tiller Russell, uh, he's a, he seems like a cool dude. I've heard him talk. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I, I, it's cool. Uh, it's, it's, 
God. It's cool to have access to Netflix. It's crazy. I, I'm saying that in 2021. And I'm getting it when it's the most expensive it's ever been, folks. With $18.99. What, what happened to $10? Wasn't it $10 for Netflix? I got to pay $8.99 more? No, it's fine. All right, friends. That's the podcast. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. Keep moving forward. Keep doing your thing. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, I do another one every Saturday where I continue to ramble on about shit uh, at patreon.com slash Trevor Olson. Just look Trevor Olson up on Patreon. You'll find me, and uh, you can hop on board there. So, And you can get all sorts of cool shit when you sign up, too. So you can sign up for those five bucks. Go all the way up to a billion if you want. Pay me a billion dollars a month uh, for on Patreon. All right, guys. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Keep moving forward, and we'll see you later.